Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Beta FPV 75 XHD Micro Brushless HD Whoop. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs and then head outdoors and check how it's going to perform. The 75 XHD is the smaller brother of the 85 XHD which I really liked and unfortunately got discontinued. It features 1103 8000 kV motors, gem fan 1636 40mm four bladed props, on the front you can find the Cadex Total V2 HD FV camera, its angle is not adjustable and it is enclosed in the same canopy of the Beta FV 85X HD. The VTX is also identical, it supports 48 channels and has a selectable output strength of 25 and 200 millivolts. The antenna is soldered to the board and unfortunately it's not bundled with a custom version of the Luminar Axi antenna and this is just a simple linear antenna. On the back you can find a programmable LED board. The LED units are pretty bright, however the board itself is not secured properly and I already crashed this quadcopter a few times and I recommend that if you don't fly this quadcopter at night you better remove the board and if you want to make sure that it's going to stay in its position you need to add some glue on the sides. The 75X HD is using an XT30 battery connector and it's connected to the flight controller and ESC all-in-one board using pretty thick 18 AWG wires. The F4 flight controller which is being used is very similar to this one from GEPRC which I'm going to review soon except it doesn't feature the buzzer pads. It comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.5.3 and it features an integrated 4-in-1 BLLES 12A ESC. Finally on the bottom you can find this EFROSKY XM Plus receiver since this is the EFROSKY FCC version and you can get it with also plenty of other receivers or you can get a plug and play version and then you can add your own receiver. Inside the box along with the quadcopter you're getting an extra set of Gemfen 1636 propellers and also a Cadix OSD control board. By default the camera is set to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, an NTSC picture format and it's not programmed to automatically start the video recording when you plug the battery and I highly advise you to turn on the auto recording feature because pressing the button is not very convenient and the nice thing about this camera is that when you unplug the battery the video is going to be automatically saved and it's going to save you some time and trouble. In case you wonder this version does come with a microphone but the audio is not going to be very usable and on the flight footage I just muted it. The weight of the 75X HD is 57.9 grams, so it's about 17 grams lighter than the 85X HD. It's also lighter than the iFlight Cinebi and the SPC Maker Mini Well HD, and it's about 10 grams heavier than the Happy Model Mobula 7 HD. The wheelbase of the frame is 75 mm, and the distance between the left motors and the right ones, and also between the front ones and the back ones, is 54 mm. The frame is made from a semi-flexible material, so it's not going to break easily, and I did crash this quadcopter a couple of times, and it's still in one piece. Now unlike its bigger brother, the 75X HD is using a plastic battery bay, and you'll be able to squeeze inside a 300mAh 3S like battery, which is the recommended battery to be used with this quadcopter. Even though you can also use a 300mAh 2S type of battery, it's not recommended in my opinion because the quadcopter is not going to be powerful enough and I managed to hover at around 70% throttle, which is enough just for cruising around and if you want to have fun, I highly recommend to stick to this one. In terms of flight time, I got close to 3.5 minutes, which is pretty good. And if you are just going to cruise around, I can estimate that you're going to get close to 4.5 minutes. In terms of range, you're going to be pretty much limited by the VTX and not by the radio receiver. The EFROSKY FCC version that I have features the EFROSKY XM Plus receiver, which is great. And it also broadcasts the RSSI on Auxiliary 12, so it's easy to monitor the RSSI on the OSD. If you'd like to upgrade the VTX, I recommend to start by changing the linear antenna to an omnidirectional one. So overall, I can tell you that the 75X HD is very fun to fly, it's also pretty durable, and unlike the 85X HD, which might be a little bit too powerful to fly indoors, you 
can also fly it indoors relatively safely. So now I'm going to show you the flight footage and as you're about to see it is pretty smooth so that's great and as always if you have any questions about the Beta FPV 75 XHD feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you Thank you.